So just checking whether we are live on yeah. all the platforms. We are live now. Okay. Yeah. Good. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are here to talk about coping with colon cancer. And we've got with us a very interesting uh, guest with us. I've got uh, Mr. Ramendra Kumar, and I'll introduce him in just a minute. Um, Quick introduction for those of you who don't know Patients Engage. We strongly believe that information is the key to managing chronic conditions and any difficult medical conditions. And the more you're informed, the better you are able to make choices and feel empowered to deal with your situation. Um, for those of you, again, who don't know, we have done for cancer, especially we've done a whole range of topics uh, ranging from psychosocial issues of dealing with uh, breast cancer, bladder cancer, uh, getting fit after cancer, uh, childhood cancer, uh, silence and lower limb, you know, lower limb lymphedema type of issues, uh, side effects of hormone therapy, talking to children about cancer and how children feel about having uh, parents who've gone through cancer. We've spoken to couples who've dealt with uh, you know, one of them having cancer, uh, caregivers as well, and so on and so forth. And you'll find all of this content on our YouTube channel, so you can go and check it out. Uh, and beyond cancer, we do other conditions as well. Uh, and, you know, we do about 70 or different conditions. So you'll find all of the content on our Facebook pages, on our YouTube channels, on the website, patientsengage.com. Uh, it's a rich uh, uh, compendium now of uh, information and you can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. A uh, quick reminder to people who are watching us, uh, this is not replacing a medical consultation. So please remember this is just the personal experience of the patient and the session is being recorded. If you're in Zoom, you can post your questions on the Q&A. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can post them on the live feed. And you can always write to us at editor at patientsengage.com and we'll always respond to your messages. Um, and you know, if you have an experience to share or you have a question, you can also, there are forums on the website which you can uh, ask your questions on as well. Um, so getting back to you know, our guest today is Mr. Ramendra Kumar. He's a retired sale executive. He's a motivational speaker, an award-winning author, and he's currently dealing with colon cancer. Uh, and I'm a Parnamithal, I'm founder of Patients Engage, and I'll be moderating this session. So let me just quickly stop sharing and let's get started. Uh, Ramendra, good evening. Good evening. Um, can you introduce yourself in your own way in you know, a few sentences? So I'm a writer by passion, a storyteller by obsession, a mentor and a perfect husband by aspiration, a dancer by, uh, what should I say, inspiration, and now a COVID warrior by determination. My family... Sorry, so, we just... You meant cancer warrior, right? So we are losing you. just having some, I think Ramendra seems to be having some technical issues, so he'll probably rejoin us in just a minute. Yeah, you're back? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we, uh, you were freezing. So yeah, you were saying you're a cancer warrior by determination. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so tell us, um, when did you first see the symptoms of cancer and your journey mm -hmm. to diagnosis? A couple of uh, months, I mean, like, uh, this was diagnosed in November. So a couple of months before that, I had some issues of uh, indigestion, you know, and uh, some kind of constipation and all. I didn't take it seriously. Mm. And then uh, one day I was, uh, there were some slight traces of blood. That mm. too, I wasn't very serious about. 
But then I thought, let me uh, consult a doctor because of this uh, continual indigestion. Mm. So he gave me some medicines and all that, and he asked me to come back after two weeks. So on the thirteenth day, in the stool, there was almost one teaspoon full of thick, viscous blood. Mm. I went back to him. He said, colonoscopy, and then biopsy, then CT scan and PET scan. Verdict was terse and terrible. I was suffering from second stage colon cancer. My uh, colon had as many polyps as they are history sheeters in Indian politics, you know, criminals in Indian politics. Mm. They were hanging like grapes, you know. And some of them were in the, two of them were in the cancerous stage, a few in the precancerous, and the rest were in various stages of uh, abnormality. The CEA marker, what they say, the tumor marker, which mm. is supposed to be around, uh, say, 4.7, was 67.5 hmm. and that again was a uh, ringing a kind of an alarm uh, bell right so that was it you know and then they advised some treatment and all that right right okay so coming to the treatment what has been your treatment so far and you know kind of what's been uh, the challenging parts of it and what have been the easy parts of it so I had five T20 matches with the radiation. Mm. Uh, it was considered short, aggressive radiation, five continual days. This was followed by four cycles uh, of uh, chemo. Mm. Now on, uh, and a chemo port was installed with surgery. They right. did it on the right side because left side, my heart is there. My heart, my wife resides. So they thought they should do it on the right side. Mm. And... Uh, on the 17th of this month, I will be going in for a surgery where I will gain independence. I will be decolonized. My mm. colon will be removed. A stoma bag will be attached for, say, three to four weeks. And after that, they will again reconnect the uh, small intestine with the rectum. And hopefully, I would not need an internal stoma bag. And uh, uh, But again, I'll have to go for four uh, cycles of chemo. So right. it's, a, it's a long, long process. Right, right. Uh, so as we are talking to Ramendra Kumar, if any of you have any questions or comments, please do leave them on the live feed. Uh, and, you know, we will come to the filmi tarka, but you will have already seen that, uh, you know, that because tarka is always at the end, but you will have seen that, you know, the spices are kind of starting already. Uh, so tell us, um, Ramendra, how did you deal with, I mean, you have radiation, you have chemo. What were the most difficult parts of those treatments and how did you deal with them? So on the third day of the radiation, on the second day, I had an interview with, I mean, I interviewed uh, Sam Petroda, somehow managed to do it and it was it went off like a breeze. Mm. Uh, but after the radiation cycle was complete, three days after that, I had diarrhea and terrible uh, nausea. Mm. And the weakness was horrible. You know, I just couldn't get up. And right. for me, that's really, really rare. Unless my mother-in-law is in the living room and I'm in the bedroom, there's never a situation that I don't get up and face life, you know. Right. But then, uh, in the uh, again, uh, as far as the chemo was concerned, after the second cycle, there was constipation and nausea. To treat the constipation, they gave me some medicines, which resulted in diarrhea. Mm. And believe me, Aparna, this diarrhea was the most terrible thing, a painful thing I have faced since my engineering exam, you know, fifth year, a fourth year. Mm. And it was like cramps, you know, like it, my stomach was churning. And six to seven times I went to the washroom and I was close to uh, tears. Right. At the same time, I was also plagued by nausea. I couldn't eat. Mm. And between the second and third, I had covid so everything that oh. could go wrong, mm. went wrong. Mm. But luckily, I had doctors who were very, very supportive. And my wife, Madhvi, and my son, Aniket, they have a great head for these kind of things. Uh, both of them are not doctors, but they mm. understand. So they were in continual conversation with the doctors. And they were tweaking the medicine, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, tweaking the frequency, the dosage. And also, they were also studying my condition and reporting back to the doctor and saying, this is the way he's responding. Right. So I could somehow manage through that. 
but when i say manage it was believe me really 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 tough right right so um how did you get through those uh, you know kind of you've talked of how um, you dealt with the constipation diarrhea etc what was going on in your mind at that time see uh, let me start at the very beginning you know that uh, my wife madhvi and i we were working as general managers in rukkila shri plant both of us to, uh, took we had to follow our respective passions my passion as i said was writing and storytelling and all that and for the first 10 months from say uh, jan uh, mm, uh, 2021 till november 2021 it was a blast two of my books were released they became best sellers a lot of sessions and all i was on the happiest high from right. there once the diagnosis slammed into me i fell in a pit of despair so mm. when i was told this uh, all f- uh, four of us were together we went to the canteen and then i started uh, raving and ranting i said why me how come mm. me poor me i don't smoke i don't drink i don't take red meat i'm slim and trim i exercise regularly then why should i be subjected to this mm. and i just went on a trip and then i looked at my family you know my wife my son aniket and my daughter ankita their faces had crumpled it was as if they were seeing my own death in my eye in my own eyes mm. and i thought i can't do this to them they don't deserve it right. so i decided that there's going to be a paradigm shift and i'm going to manage this with my own mantra of battling every tumor with humor i'm going to just share a bit of my background mm. i am a suicide survivor at the age 15 i was saved by my dad uh, i'm from a broken home my mother left uh, us my dad and i uh around when i was 16 i have a condition called brittle diabetes i do not know how many people are familiar with that in that what happens is you go from a low of 46 early in the morning to a high of 510 or 12 at in the afternoon so that is the way the thing jumps you know and that can be a very harmful situation so i was put on a insulin pump in 2014 so there are only two lovely things attached to me my wife my beautiful wife madhavi and the insulin pump who have right. been with me together uh, i mean uh, with me for the last 7 8 8 years then i also have something called silent thyroiditis hmm. which again means what it means that you go from a hyper to hypo and swing back again in 2016 uh, uh, i was uh, there was a funny condition like there was a polyp in my uh, uh, blood vessel which was kind of uh, 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 you know suppressing the vocal cords you know impacting on the vocal cords and i was kind of losing my voice the people in my office were delighted ramendra kumar is not go- not going to shout at us my wife was dancing what she couldn't achieve in 27 years this uh, so called tumor or whatever i had achieved in 27 weeks but seriously she rushed me to uh, from raukila to um, hyderabad where i was uh, operated in a, by one of the leading surgeons there and the operation was obviously successful but had anything gone or i i wouldn't be here talking to you so i was thinking if i can survive all this to so cancer ka baap bhi kuch nahi kar sakta mm. and that gave me the strength so what did we do we i decided to script a new reality forge a new thought process mm. my daughter and i created a dance video which went on uh, to you know notch up uh, Uh, 225k videos on insta there with an inspirational message and then i took part in panel discussions interviews and uh, splashed the social media with fun filled messages but believe me waves of black depression do hit me even now mm. it's as if everything is closing into me and you know i i really can't describe to you how terrible it is few months back i was on the top of the world and now this and the future definitely is uncertain because cancer uh, people say is a recurrent visitor you know you can again pay a, pay a visit and all that but i believe in two great philosophers one is gabbar singh mm. in 75 he said jo dar gaya wo mar gaya mm. and second in 2022 the super great philosopher pushpa who mm. said mai jhukega nahi mm. so with these philosophers as my icons 
I'm trying to battle the cancer. Right, right. Uh, no, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, first of all, kudos to your uh, spirit. Uh, but you're right that, you know, it does, uh, uh, it, the, the fear and the, uh, and the, you know, the moments anxiety. of depression and anxiety uh, are real. And, uh, and I think it's, we should acknowledge that it is, you know, it's part of the journey as well. Um, so tell us, how are you and your family dealing with, you know, all of the questions? Because you are uh, publicly talking about uh, cancer. And in fact, we had seen your Instagram uh, video. That's how we reached out to you, uh, you know, a couple of months back. Uh, but tell us, how are you dealing? Because uh, sometimes people find it very overwhelming when they share information and then tons of questions come up. Uh, so then there's a question of how much to share, who to share it with, what not to share, when to share. How do you deal with all of that? I have, I and my family have had no issues. We always believe in truth and transparency. And mm -hmm. I believe that the only way you can create trust and empathy is by speaking out, speaking the truth. And in the process of speaking the truth, if I can help somebody somewhere in some corner of the world, I think right. I've you know, achieved my uh, mission. And I'm not ashamed of my colon cancer. Why should I be? It's not because of me, because of my lifestyle, which was not, uh, which was incorrect. It's a genetic thing. It could have happened to anybody. Mm. So that's why I have spoken about it. My family speaks about it, and we take it as any other condition. You know, we are right. not, you know, we are not caught down by some huge kind of monster. Because I think the more you get scared, the more the worse it gets. Right. You know, look, look it straight in the eye and say, get lost. Mm. So you mentioned uh, uh, hereditary or genetic. Um, so do you have family history around it? Actually, my mother in the 70s, she was diagnosed. But then people thought piles, you know, cancer thing had really not come to that extent. The investigation was, mm. still, I think, pretty um, uh, in the preliminary kind of stages and all, you know. Uh, it was not so uh, advanced. So later when the doctor saw that, he said that just seeing the report and seeing that uh, the, whatever that photograph, or, I mean, the, this thing is transparency is, he said that this can only be uh, genetic. Then mm. later my uncle who's in uh, Seattle, when I wrote to him, then he told me that he also had the first stage. Right. I wanted to tell him, why didn't you tell me earlier? Had you told mm. me earlier, I would have got this thing done, colonoscopy done before 50. Right. I'm 58 now. And possibly right. this could have been controlled. But mm. he had the same uh, syndrome which you are talking about. Hush, hush, we should not talk about it. We should not tell anybody. We should not share with anybody. So mm. see how much of damage it can do to your near and dear ones if you shut your face. Right, right. Um, so um, as I said, most people are reluctant to share about their cancer, especially during treatment. What has been your experience? What has been your learning about sharing, especially on social media? Uh, my, uh, it has been fantastic, I think 90%, except for mm. one or two people who, about whom I'll tell you. The uh, first thing was that the radiation oncologist who was treating me, she called me a rock star with nerves of steel and uh, a humorous, a humorous which is alive and nudging. And she shared it in her, her uh, platforms, you know, and she got a response from uh, head of some major hospitals and all that. This is the way to fight cancer. A complete stranger wrote to me on Insta saying that his uh, father was, suggest was suffering from a particular ailment uh, related to arteries, you know, uh, because of which he was not getting up from the chair. But after seeing our dance video, my daughter and my dance video, he started getting up and attempting to walk. Now tell me, Abana, how heartwarming is that? You know, right. I'm sure this, when I came to know this, Many of the cancer cells would have committed suicide, you know, with this kind of positivity. There was a cancer specialist who wrote to me that you are the ideal person as far as a, mm, a warrior is concerned, because most people think that cancer is the death knell. But you're yeah. showing to them that cancer is just a word. Right. It is not a sentence. Right. The regional director of IMC, uh, Indian Institute of Mass Communication, has written a couple of columns on my fight mm. with cancer. People have been messaging me on WhatsApp, FB, Insta, lauding my fight, lauding my spirit. Somebody has called me a messiah, an inspiration. And uh, somebody called me uh, Ramin Sher Khan. So I told mm. him, 
भाई घर में तो मैं भीगी बिल्ली हूँ बीवी के सामने यू आर कॉल मी रमेन शेर खान नाउ अपन जस्ट सी दिस गुरुद्वारा चांस Vedic mantras and healing invocations. Right. This kind of affection and bonding, I think, this is my greatest weapon against the scourge called cancer. And the results. When I came, went back a few days back for the PET scan and all, the doctors were very, very happy. And the marker, tumor marker, which was sixty-seven point five, had come down to four point five. Mm. I'm not saying that I'm not suffering from cancer or it's reduced to some extent and all, but there is some. positive result and many people who look at me you know with all these flowery shirts and all that and this kind of other thing they say you don't look like i'm fighting cancer that right. you that you're fighting cancer so i think somewhere it is in the mind also right uh, then they have been the other side of it a friend of mine said that you don't do any treatment because chemo is going to kill you Radi- radiation is going to smash you so i said what should i do he said you do puja Mm. So then I thought, okay, allopathy, homeopathy, and uh, naturopathy, and now puja pathy. Mm. So I'm not an agnostic or, uh, or a disbeliever, you know. But the point is, you when the cancer is in high school stage and not graduation, I should go in for the mainstream treatment, and along with that, I can have everything else. But you okay. just cannot say because chemo is going to be bad, you won't do chemo. Radiation mm. is going to be bad. I mean, you just can't give up the fight before entering the battlefield. That is so stupid. Right. And there was one person who kept saying that, uh, "Ab abhi tak you've been sharing all over the place, this and that, social media and all. Now you should become antarmukhi. Hmm. You should uh, look inside." So I said, "I feel half of Bangalore has been looking inside me, and hmm. my rectum has got more eyeballs than uh, uh, this uh, kacha badam video. <laughs> How much more should people look inside me?" So jokes apart, this is the kind of feedback you get. But the uh, the crumb, the cake, and the casserole was taken by my brother-in-law. He is a person who keeps saying that you know you should maintain gravity. In fact, I think that had he been during the time of Isaac Newton, before Newton could discover, he would have discovered gravity without the help of the apple. So he rang up my wife and he started lambasting her. He's ten years senior to me. That what is the main thing? Is he gone mad? He is making fun of death. He is ridiculing something like cancer. He will die in bits and pieces. Right. I I told Madhvi I will not uh, uh, allow the lack of colon to a period to put a period or even a comma to my humor and creativity. And Aparna, this is the year of the comedians, mm. Zelensky, Bhagwant Man, and now mm. hopefully Ramendra Kumar. Right. Great, great. So final words uh, uh, before the tarka, uh, and I will. come to the tarka um final words on coping strategies that worked for you and that people can uh, you know kind of uh, yeah. uh, learn from so i would like to say not only for cancer or tumor or for any 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 difficulty in life and this i have learned from my father my god my khuda my bhagwan hmm don't take yourself too seriously in anything whether it's a boil in the bum or your bum on the boil try to see the ridiculous in the sublime not easy but try and i keep saying move from your mahalon your takhton your taazon ki duniya great 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 uh, song but in this context move from your mahalon your takhton to zindagi ek safar hai suhana because you have no choice if you weep and you know if, if there there is a saying in hindi agar aap roenge to aap akele roenge agar aap hasenge to sari duniya aapke sath hasti hai so correct why not why not mm. then you pursue a passion for me uh, i think somebody asked me i think it was you who asked me once in a conversation that people find it difficult to focus i say if you mm. have a passion you can focus for me my writing is my passion ever since the last 50 years so i kept focusing on my passion so that the negative uh, you know vibes or the negativity did not intrude into my private space i was always thinking about storytelling a session with the awesome aparna and these kind of things you know which help me focus on the 
positive right in this rodent race called uh, life aparna we have forgotten or we don't have the time to forge relations so this is a great time mm. to bond with your friends both online and offline people say online friends are not good i mean it, it's not the that relationship is very fragile and it's uh, very uh, transitory i don't think for right. me the kind of support and help and encouragement and inspiration i've got from my online friends is humongous then you should also have offline real time a very supportive family and friends who will give you unconditional support without judging you mm. that is really really important i have cre- you have heard of this atm card anytime mm. money or what an automatic teller machine i have created a card called anytime memory so please create mes- uh, memories you need only two things time and love right. both of us both everybody has enough of these two but people say we don't have time invest in time hmm share you know affection and love and bonding and all create memories because all sudden now now when i'm in the icu when i'm in the ward i will not be able to concentrate on anything but i can draw on my memories when right. my uh, my family was closeted all of us were closeted during covid for uh, almost 100 days in rurkela uh, i thought it's going to be a world war 3 but we because we had these memories today i am on the outskirts of bangalore in a mango orchard and what are we doing we are creating memories so please please create memories remember as effective as uh, chemo radiation and surgery is your own will power and resilience create an ecosystem of positivity because once you create this ecosystem the entire universe will uh, come around you mm. will conspire with you to give you solace strength and sucker thank you thank you, you ramendra so let us just try and get that video that you've sent us going and then we'll do the you know wrap up i hope the technology works so let me share so here is a video of ramendra kumar my take on amitabh's iconic dialogue in diva proxy big b to the big c आज खुश तो बहुत हो गए तुम जिसने आज तक कभी सिगरेट नहीं पी शराब को हाथ नहीं लगाया कोई नशा नहीं किया जिसने परफेक्ट डाइट रखी जिसने रेगुलर एक्सरसाइज की जो स्लिम एंड ट्रिम है वो तुम्हारे चुंगल में कैसे आकर फंस गया आज खुश तो बहुत हो गए तुम आज खुश तो बहुत हो गए तुम लेकिन तुम शायद जानते नहीं इस जंग में मैं अकेला नहीं हूं मेरे साथ मेरी मस्ती है मेरा जज्बा है मेरे दोस्तों की फौज है उनकी दुआएं हैं तुम्हारे कब्जे में मेरे पॉलिप्स हैं मेरे लिम्फ नोट्स हैं मेरा कोलोन है मेरे पास क्या है क्या है मेरे पास मेरे पास माँ है माधवी अंकिता अनिकेत तुम्हारा हारना तो अब पक्का है निकल पड़ो कैंसर मेरे दुश्मन तुम्हारा हारना तो पक्का है निकल पड़ो कैंसर मेरे दुश्मन तुमने अभी देखा कहां है हमारा टशन तुमने अभी देखा कहां है हमारा टशन सो आई थिंक वी आर सीइंग योर टशन एंड यू नो वी वी होप दैट वी विश यू द बेस्ट फॉर थैंक यू योर सर्जरी नेक्स्ट वीक एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट दैट फॉलोस um and thank you so much for taking the time you know in the midst of your treatment and with the impending surgery uh to come and talk to us and kind of doing you know kind of sharing your uh, approach to dealing with cancer your uh, uh, attitude as you said uh, tumor with humor uh, and uh, and I, i think there are a lot of lessons that people can uh, learn from it and we wish that you continue to rock uh, and dance your way through the rest of the treatment as well um so yeah uh, and as I, as i said best wishes for your continued treatment uh, thank you thank you so thank much you. thank you